Hello again, everybody. It is Gordon Majak here, back with another episode of Timeless Pop, Rock, and Soul. And today, uh, as I've been promising here in the last few episodes, we are going back to the 70s for the first of quite a few uh, tunes from the 70s. Going to go back and go deep into the 70s. Some of my favorite stuff, right? My favorite era. So many of my favorite artists and my favorite songs. And we are going to start today right there in January of 1970. When I was only 11 years old, going on 12 years old, and when I pulled up the artwork for this record today, I just started laughing because it brought the whole thing back to me. Uh, January 1970, there I was, 11, going on 12, sitting on the floor in my bedroom with a stack of 45s and at my crummy little record player. And man, I will tell you, this is a 45. One of the first ones I ever bought back there as a kid and one that I just wore out. I loved this song. This is the classic Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes by Edison Lighthouse. Now, you may be saying um, you don't remember the song, which you'll hear it here in a second. Or you may say, I remember the song, but I didn't remember the artist, Edison Lighthouse. What's the deal with Edison Lighthouse? Well, uh, let me tell you the deal with Edison Lighthouse. Edison Lighthouse is, for all intents and purposes, an empty name. It's a group that didn't really, for practical purposes, exist back there in 1970. And let me tell you how that happened. Now, you see here that this song was written by Barry Mason and Tony McCauley. Well, they also happen to be the record producers, and I'm sure they had a hand in the publishing as well. And there they were doing their job for the record company, uh, trying to write hit records. So they wrote a good one there in late 1969, Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes. But there was no such band as Edison Lighthouse. That was just a name they cooked up as a front for their song that they had written and produced, recorded by session musicians on all the instrumental tracks. And then they brought in a very accomplished uh, session singer, the great Tony Burroughs, to do the lead vocal. Well, the funny part about all of this is that this must have just been the weirdest thing at the time. And I, I remember some of these songs, but I don't remember uh, all of them. But here, let me show you this really quick. So here's Tony Burroughs uh, back there in the day. As I said, quite an accomplished uh, UK session singer. He went on to do, uh, among other things, he went on to do uh, background vocals for Elton John on the Mad Men Across the Water album, singing backgrounds on both Levon and a Tiny Dancer. How would you like to have that on your resume? Oh, I just did some backgrounds with Elton. Really? What songs? Oh, Levon and Tiny Dancer. Holy cow, right? Okay, now here's the weird part of the story. So as I said, Edison Lighthouse is a fictitious band. It's basically a front for the producers and probably the record company and the songwriters. The producers and the songwriters are the same people. Uh, it's recorded by session musicians, so there's no ownership of the track there. They're just paid to come in and, and lay down the instrumental tracks. Uh, Tony Burroughs, the accomplished lead singer, really doesn't have too much to say. He was probably a hired gun uh, for this particular track. But here's the very strange thing. Now, Tony Burroughs, as I said, an accomplished session singer. All at about the same time, Tony Burroughs, this phenomenon repeated itself at least five times, meaning Tony Burroughs was the voice, the recognizable, charismatic lead singer voice behind all of these hit records that were all more or less on the chart contemporaneously with each other. And none of these bands were actual bands. These records came out like Love Grows, Where My Rosemary Goes, the record comes out and it's it's a huge hit. And then the producers had to scramble. The record company had to scramble to hurry up and put a group together so they could go on TV and lip sync the lyrics on a music show, right? So they brought a group of musicians together and they put Tony Burroughs out in front of them and they pushed him out there on TV as Edison Lighthouse when in fact there really was no such thing as Edison Lighthouse prior to that. Well, on that very same TV show, this is just crazy to me. 
On the very same TV show, Tony Burroughs also appeared with two other shell corporation groups. I mean, two two hollow bands, two non-bands, uh, singing their songs that he had also done the lead vocal for. And those groups were also mostly fictitious. So this was just a thing that happened uh, quite remarkably to the great Tony Burroughs and really speaks to his ability, obviously, as a charismatic lead singer, right? He keeps getting these gigs, singing these songs that are going to be hits, um, but he's really mostly, mostly working for the record company and the producers and the songwriters rather than singing in an actual band or singing for himself as the artist of record, if you know what I mean. Now, these records, here we are. There's a song called Gimme Dat Ding by The Pipkins. It's actually Tony Burroughs. A song called My Baby Loves Love by White Plains. Oh, yeah, that's also Tony Burroughs. This one, Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes, Edison Lighthouse, Tony Burroughs. A song called Beach Baby by a group called The First Class. There's really no such group. That's Tony Burroughs singing that. Here's a song called United We Stand by a group called Brotherhood of Man. It's Tony Burroughs. And here's another one called Let's Go to San Francisco by the Flower Pot Men. Okay? All six of these records, big hits, all six featuring the lead vocals of, of Tony Burroughs, and all six of these quote-unquote uh, band names, mostly a cover for the record company and the producers and the songwriters, because that's how they did it back then in the old days. If they found something that worked, they milked it. And in this case, what worked was those great lead vocals, uh, charismatic lead vocals of the great Tony Burroughs. And there I was in my bedroom cranking it, and man, this song still sounds fantastic all these years later. Now, as I was looking this up today, I see that apparently there was uh, quite a little bit of noise about this song back there about a year or so ago, early 2022, with some TikTok videos and some other things like that involving this record. And all I can say is good. All these years later, 50 years later, I hope people are discovering this song because it may have been a one hit wonder by a fictitious band back there in 1970 when it came out. But uh no matter how crass and commercial and cynical the original uh, intent of the record may have been, man, they struck magic with this one. I think I always loved this one as a kid. It still sounds great. I can't believe more cover bands and more bands in general haven't covered this song because I always just thought, man, a good rocking arrangement like this with some horns in there and some strings and those good vocals. This is a song that uh, should have come back around and been a hit for more than one artist, maybe, right? From 1970, it is Edison Lighthouse, not really, it's Tony Burroughs, singing the hell out of Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes. Ah, what a lick. change. Oh, 
that is just such a great track, such a great instrumental track. I think uh, maybe Chicago should have done that as an encore back in the day with Robert Lamb belting out that lead vocal. That would have been fun, huh, back there in the early 70s. I just always loved this record, man. I don't care how commercial or mainstream or whatever you want to call it, it was back there in the day. What a cool sound, man. There's never been another song that sounds like that. That song is so unique, and seeing this picture just takes me right back to it. And how about Tony Burroughs, man? Uh, that's the common element across all of those hit songs that I had mentioned there, five, six hit records. They're all on the chart just about at the same time back there, man. What was going on in this dude's astrology chart? Because he was... On one hand, uh, striking gold in terms of getting his voice out there on the airwaves, but uh, I think in some ways a bit of a tragedy as well, because I've heard it said that he's the voice between uh, behind five one-hit wonders. Well, <laughs> figure that out. That means people know the songs uh, and they may recognize the voice in their ear, but uh, guess who's not getting the credit for those hit songs, right? It's Tony Burroughs because there's that fictitious band name thing. So um, kind of a mixed blessing there, I guess. He's getting his voice out there and uh, he's, he's uh, getting gigs and working and people are hearing his voice on these songs. But there's the lack of recognition at the same time. What an unusual uh arrangement that must have been for Tony Burroughs back there in the day. But like I said, man, when you've sung on Elton's album, Mad Ben Across the Water, and you've got Levon and Tiny Dancer backing vocals on your resume, holy cow, he could have only done that in his career. He would still be a somebody on the music scene, right? Considering uh, how great uh, and timeless those songs have proven to be. Along with this one, I would submit, love grows where my rosemary goes, man. That line, uh, I'm a lucky fella and I just got to tell her that I love her endlessly. Oh my God, that one has killed me from the start. Tony Burroughs, man, that was, the more I think about it, that is just the strangest thing. And it must have just, it must have just be the weirdest phenomenon for him. Because he wants to say, well, that's me. Well, how come your records, your name's not on the record? Oh, that other one, that was me. I sang that one. You sang that? Well, I thought that was some band called blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, just uh, crazy. But you can you can sure hear what a uh, talented and charismatic lead singer. Top five in the U.S., number one in the U.K. And he did it a few times. Just with those funny names on the records right that's the way the business works man those record companies they find something that works you know they are going to run that baby into the ground i guess maybe that's why this one ended up being the first one of the bunch huh love grows and there was no edison lighthouse come on don't fool me man can you imagine he goes on the show, the music show, and he's just basically coming out with one band and he's singing this song and then he goes backstage and changes and he comes out with the other band and he sings another song and then he goes backstage. A little while later, he comes back out with a third band and he sings a third hit song and it's supposedly three different bands and it's the same dude up front singing all of them. That is nuts. What a weird side story. See you tomorrow, folks, in the next one. So much cool 70s on the way. Don't miss it. See ya. Tony Burroughs, man. I wish I could sing like that dude.